from Sven Joran Eriksson to the Countess of Wessex, a series of celebrities have been duped by a journalist who disguises himself in Arab robes. His newspaper, The News of the World, also says his work has put many criminals behind bars. Now, Maza Mahmoud's identity could itself be exposed after a legal victory by George Galloway. The News of the World has decided not to appeal against the ruling, so the Respect MP is now free to release photographs of the man known as the fake sheikh. Dash Nasoni reports. A man with no face, but his disguise is all too familiar. The fake sheikh, News of the World undercover reporter Mazir Mahmoud. But could he have met his match in gorgeous George Galloway, an MP who recently described himself as a bit of a catch? I think it was always going to happen that one day somebody, after all these uh, other people got dumbed by the fake shake, that somebody would recognise him. And, um, and it's just rather sweet that it is George Galloway because George Galloway is the sort of person who's, who's going to make a lot of hay uh, about it and indeed has done. Mazer Mahmoud is fiercely protective of his identity. He works undercover and claims to have put over a hundred criminals behind bars. His biggest targets are the rich and famous. He wants lured Sven Joran Eriksson to a bogus business meeting in Dubai and filmed him making indiscreet comments about his players. But his style of journalism courts criticism. He's often accused of entrapment. His greatest scoop was exposing an alleged plot to kidnap Victoria Beckham. Five men were arrested, but the case fell apart after it was revealed that the main witness had been paid by Mahmoud's newspaper. Could the reporter be losing his touch? When he invited George Galloway to a business meeting at the Dorchester Hotel on Park Lane, the MP, who once dressed up as a cat on a reality TV show, immediately smelt a rat. When Mr. Galloway arrived here for his dinner date, he was met by a man wearing Arab costume who claimed to be an Islamist. Yet he didn't have a beard or seemed to know much about Islamic practices. The fake sheikh then started to ask Mr. Galloway a number of crude questions about how to fund an MP. The media savvy Mr. Galloway lodged a complaint with the Speaker of the House of Commons and the Met Police, claiming Mahmoud tried to get him to make anti-Semitic remarks. The reporter is used to criticism. Perhaps what really worried him was the threat to print his picture. His newspaper immediately took out an injunction trying to stop publication. The judge realised that the reality is even if Mr Mahmoud's life is, under is indeed under threat, and that was the evidence before the court, the publication of his photograph wouldn't actually add to the danger. The people who he has set up in the past, the people who might be after him, would already know what he looks like. The fake sheikh lost his case and his picture can now be revealed. But in fact, it's already been published on several internet sites over the years. His newspaper has asked us not to reveal his identity because Mahmoud has received credible death threats. The question, now that he's been rumbled, what disguise will he come up with next? Dash Nasoni with me in the studio, George Galloway MP and Nick Ferrari, radio presenter, who's worked for several tabloid papers, including being former assistant editor of the Daily Mirror. And you think that this chap's identity should be protected? Yes, I do. Um, the only people who are celebrating tonight are uh, charlatans, pimps, con artists, villains and would-be terrorists. Your report talks about maybe more than 100 people being put behind bars. I'll tell you, it's 120 villains have been put behind bars, not least people who tried to perhaps make some form of terrorist bomb. They are the ones who are celebrating. I'm afraid it's a terribly dark day for a journalism. A great public servant by the side yes, of it, Sir George the, Galloway. The, the news of the world, that friend of the, uh, of the weak and the downtrodden, the sight of the news of the world huddling behind Mary Bell, John Venables and Maxine Carr, when everybody knows that they would be leading the vigilante squads against such people if they could only unmask them. The idea of the news of the world sheltering behind the right of privacy, the right of pictures taken for one purpose not being used in a national newspaper for quite another is simply preposterous and the judge threw their case out lock, stock and barrel. This man's not a journalist, he's a provocateur. He sets people up. Some of these criminals that Mr. Ferrari is booming about were actually entrapped in the crimes that they committed by this man. In 1999, well, I, I spoke about this in Parliament. But I mean, there are two issues here. One is the idea of a newspaper going to law anyway against yes. other journalists. Mm -hmm. um, but, but the important part of that is that they used laws that they have themselves 
try to overturn. In other words, for example, they've wanted the identity of the Bulger uh, yes. uh, murderers uh, known, and they've wanted Mary Bell uh, to be identified. Yes. Now they say, oh, no, no, because they're protected, we should be protected. Um, both of those public services, I would say. And we have to realise what Mazhir Mahmoud has done. He is not a criminal. He's, to my knowledge, commit, committed no criminal acts, unless Mr Galloway can tell otherwise. What's happened is, unfortunately... Well, what, 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 is, what is, in fact, what he did, which was to try to clumsy. goad him into making anti-Semitic uh, uh, statements? John, you're right. It was a clumsy one. They shouldn't have done it. Well, but I don't think it's trying? right. What's well, hang on. I don't think it's right that Mazhir Mahmoud should be remembered for that. It would be the same as, say, remembering somebody who appeared on a television program because he dressed in a lurid pink lu uh, leotard and tried to drink milk out of an actress's hands. Well, I'm sure Mr Galloway wouldn't want to be remembered solely for that. You, you'd have cut even less of a dash in a lurid pink leotard than me. Absolutely. Know. If you want to make it personal, uh, we can. Uh, <laughs> if I want to make it personal. Yeah. Listen, he will, be, he, will be, he will be remembered uh, for this and for other disreputable attempts to entrap people into behaviour that they would not otherwise they have... They committed crimes, Mr uh, Galloway. Well, I certainly have committed no, no crimes, no. but he asked me to. He suggested that he could foreign fund the respect party covertly through English people. When I told them this was completely illegal and rightly so, he pressed the point and pressed the point, all the while speaking into a microphone. That's why I've demanded that they publish the text of the conversation. When that failed, he began Holocaust denying trying to lead me down a road of making anti-Semitic remarks. When that failed, he must have found the bill when it arrived quite a painful one. The Dorchester is not cheap. Now, I think a man who thinks up crimes then goes looking for people to set them up, to commit them, so that the news of the world can sell more papers and Rupert Murdoch can make more money on which he pays no tax, that that is not a public service, and that's what the judge said. Well, now, well, you're, now I think you're veering into the realms of fantasy. Mr Murdoch does pay tax, and you know that as well as I do. You want, you want to tax. be careful what you say. One percent And let's tax. talk about the people who tried to sell nuclear waste in an attempt to make a bomb in this country. Are you saying that's not a real crime? Well, you shouldn't well talk done. About You've you, just exposed the person no, who did that. You shouldn't that. talk about that, because Why? that's a live issue in front of the courts now. And when that No, case, no, there, there, there are, are previous, there are previous convictions. No, I'm there going are back reporting to a case two and a half years of What about this fake shake? What about this? Let's get back to that. I mean, uh, well, here he is. This is the fake shape. Ah, right. That's him in ah. uh, in civvies, and uh, this is him in his fake shake outfit. I've sent it to the Queen, to every member of Parliament, and to everyone I can think of who might well, one day be duped I by think him. They're, they're I, I think it's, it's time for him to retire. And it's time for us to say good night. Our main headline.